Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church. It's good to be back. I've been gone a little bit. I've been traveling for work. It's been having me pretty busy, and I wasn't afforded an opportunity to come on the last few weeks, so I'm just glad that time has permitted me or allowed me the opportunity you know, to come on and share what God has placed in my heart. As I customarily do, I'm going to just hit the share button in a couple groups and I'm going to get started with, you know, this why I go to church. And I hope that this why I go to church will speak to your heart as, you know, God speaks to my heart. And, and, and it's amazing because I tell people that these are just my reasons. And I hope that through my reasons that many of you will eventually find a reason why you should and want to go to church because many are falling away. I mean, the word of God said that many would fall away, but to see it with my own two eyes, to experience so many people just really wanting to turn their back because they just believe that there's another way. And I promise you, there isn't another way to spend eternity with God. There are other ways. There are messages that will inspire you. There are things that may bring hope. There are things that can make you be a good, morally upstanding individual. But the reality is in order for you to see God and spend time with God, you're gonna to have to do it his way. There is no shortcut in God. There is no getting around his way. I say it over and over and over and over and over again. And I feel like I say it at nauseum sometimes because we think that I shouldn't say we, many think that they can get to God another way. And there isn't. There isn't another way, and there's there's never going to be another way. And I hope that um, people come to the knowledge of that and really comprehend that there, there isn't an, another way to get to God. <laughs> there's one way to get to him, and that's through his son. And when you recognize that it's through his son, that his son left a plan of salvation. He left his, a living will and testament, which are the 66 books that we read from. And there's many different interpretations of the 66 books at this point. But you got to understand there's a difference between a transliteration of the Bible and then just having, you know, commentary and opinion about the Bible. So it's just important for us to stay strong and be steadfast in the word of God. And I try to be strong and be steadfast in the word of God. And today I just wanted to talk about uh, this topic that just was laid on my heart and hopefully that you will get something out of it. It's to be in tune, in touch with the moment. That is why I go to church to be in tune and in touch with the moment. As I was reflecting about this time of year, many are graduating. Many are attending proms. And I see that during this period of attending proms and graduations, we begin to prepare and we prepare like many other people do. Some rent dresses, some, you know, rent limousines, pull out red carpets, whatever they do. You're right, Tracy. We got to surround yourself with like-minded Christians. And I just wanted to let you know that going to the prom, going to, you know, your graduation, whatever those things that we do, many times we are so busy capturing the moment that we miss the moment. We're so busy trying to set up a stage that we actually never get on stage. And as I was thinking about preparing for, you know, the graduation at the University of Delaware that's going to be happening this weekend for the students, I want to make sure 
that I just let everybody know it's important to be in tune and in touch with the moment. Because God doesn't do it the same way every time. Now, success leaves clues. I say that many times that success will leave clues. And there's a blueprint for us to go after when it comes to how we want to be successful in God. You know, he left how to pray and and how to get to him. He, he left some instructions. But I find that many of us are missing the move of God because we are expecting God to show up the same way. So someone experienced God in this manner and they gave, you know, this amount of money. This is why God showed up. Or, you know, if somebody did this, they, they did this fast and this is why they got blessed. God will bless you because you are his child and that he loves you. And God already made a plan and had his thoughts before you ever got to the face of the earth, before you came through the womb of a woman. God, God has already thought all of that out. And I think that many times we are, are neglecting the fact that we are not listening to God, but we're watching others and we're seeing other people's successes and getting to God. So we want to mimic that success. So you'll say that Michael started the new year off and he did such and such. So I'm going to do such and such because I want God to bless me that way. And truly God is no respecter of persons. So I understand if God blessed me, God can bless you. If God gave this, God can do that to somebody else. But as I was looking through the pictures of the prom, I, I noticed the new thing right now is when you stand on the block and this camera, it goes around you and it paces this 360 view. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So I'm not hating on it, but I just begin to see how you see trends and how people keep going in the trend. They keep going after the trend. So this person's doing this, so I'm going to do it. This is what is popular, so I'm going to do it. And what ends up happening is when we get into this Christendom in, in the mechanics of going to church and, and hearing the voice of God. We are following people and they're all saying the same thing. So because they're all saying the same thing, we think that that must be God's move. God speaks in many different ways and God moves according to his timetable and not my, a man's timetable. What do I mean? At the beginning of the year, you know, when it turned 2020, you know, everyone was talking about vision that God, God's word for this year is vision. And that might not have been God's word, but because it sounded good and everybody else was doing it, you had so many people talking about, you know, moving in the vision, blah, 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 blah. And they never really sought after God. So I go to church to be in tune, in touch with the moment. Because as I was reflecting on the moments that are coming up. I want to make sure that I'm giving God the attention needed so that I can move in the direction and operate under the auspices of him to really be the ambassador, the embodiment, the epitome of what God is asking from me in this season. And I don't think that you can get and move and flow the way God wants you to flow in this season if you're so busy watching what God is doing in other people's lives and just merely mimicking it because you want success in that way. This may seem a little long, but I really want you to think about what I'm saying. Re really just let it resonate. And I'm going to take you through some Bible, some Bible passages to show you how God moved. But I'm going to start with this first passage of scripture. It is found in Corinthians. And it's Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 27. And it says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and have given chosen the weak. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. This scripture has really been ringing out in my ear. So God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Right now, conventional wisdom is telling you how to move and, and how to operate. But in this dispensation of time, it's more important that you operate and stay in sync with God 
to stay in sync with the world. So the world might be saying invest, invest, and God might be saying store, store, store. The world might be saying travel, 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 and God might be saying stay home, stay home, stay home. You have to really be in tune and touch what God is saying and not what the world is saying. The world might be saying you need to get X, Y, Z, and God said, no, stay away from it because I see something further down the road. The reason why I give this contrast, because in Exodus, and this is the main point that I want to, to hammer home today, is in Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14. God is speaking to Moses, and this is how he responds. And God says unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. I'm going to read it again. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. I go to church because I am that I am is getting to a place where he wants to be whatever you need him to be in that moment. So if you need food, God will be food. If you need shelter, God can be shelter. If you need direction, God will pr provide direction. Whatever that thing is that you need, I am is capable of being that thing. And what's happening is we are so busy, exactly, Tracy, riding the coattails of others and trying to produce success because that's what other people has done. I want to tell you that we have to become in tune to what God wants us to do so that we can be successful in the advancement of God's kingdom. And stop trying to recreate moments to say this is how God has to move. God can tell you to cross the street, and that could be the move of God that changes your life. God can send you on what you thought was a wrong turn, uh, but it was the right turn because you were moving with God. I am that I am. What does that mean? Whatever you need, I am that. But in order for you to be in tune and touch with the moment, you got to seek after the voice of God, not after the voice of man. Now, God has sent his apostle, his prophet, his pastor, his teacher, his evangelist. He's, he sent that for the perfecting, for the maturing of the saints. But you also have to get to the point where you become in tune and touch with God so that you can understand where God is trying to, to lead and guide you. So I'm going to take you to some different examples where God blessed and God did things differently every single time. So I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 22, verse number 13. So Abram, Ham, God told him to sacrifice his son. And this was a, a test face. And this was a, this was a test of his faith. And to see if God, if Abraham would be obedient to the voice of God, if he really was in tune and in touch with God. Now, you can go through Genesis chapter 22 and read through it, but high high level, this is what is happening, that Abraham is going and he, and he has his son and he's, he's going to take Isaac up and he's going to sacrifice him. Because God is I am that I am. In verse number 20, chapter 22, verse number 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And beheld behind him a ram caught in the thicket by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the sun. So he offered him a burnt offering. So Abraham was supposed to sacrifice his child because Abraham was in touch, in tune with the moment. He heard God speak in, in the bush. There was a ram. And we use that, that God will provide a ram in the bush. And we use that as a means of not to be prepared sometimes. We're like, I don't know what's going to happen, but God is going to provide a ram in a bush. But for God to bless you, he might actually tell you to be prepared, right? He might actually give you different instructions. Because a lot of times it's using what God put in front of you. And we miss the move of God because we're looking for external things. We're looking for something great. One of the greatest things that you can ever do is actually hear the voice of God and move when God says move because it is the obedience that changes the course of your life. Your obedience to the instructions that God has given is going to alter your life forever. 
and it will line up with the plan of God. But what ends up happening because Moses saw a, a ram in the bush. Excuse me, Abraham saw a ram in a bush. We now go looking for a bush because this, this is where it's coming from. But God may not be looking to fight the battle in that way. We go to Judges chapter uh, 15, verse number 15, and he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. So this was Samson now. Samson now is fighting the Philistines and Samson is outnumbered. And we know that Samson was blessed from God, but he's outnumbered, but he's in tune and touch with God. And he looks around, he sees a jawbone and he picks up the jawbone of the ass and he, and he slays the Philistine, right? So God used a, a ram in the bush and then God used the jawbone of an ass. And then we go to David. First Samuel chapter 16, verse number 23. And it came to pass. When the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hands. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed. When you understand, when God says that I am that I am, he's with, I am that I am means that whatever you need in that moment, he is capable of fulfilling. But because we're not in tune, in touch with the moment. We spend our lives trying to recreate moments. And when God doesn't show up because we created a moment that God didn't create for us, we say that God is not doing for me. He's not showing up for me. And I'm being reminded is that God is showing up for me every single day. I'm just not doing the best of job listening to the instructions that God has for me. And I'm so busy watching what God has done for someone else. And because I want the success that the other person has, I'm beginning to do the thing that the other person done. We serve an exceptional God that has exceptional plans that are individualized for every person. And he knows the time and the season that we are to be prosperous and when we should be blooming and when we should be walking in. What I'm trying to relate to you, it is not the location that calls the blessing. It is not the Jordan River that, that Nahum of Washington that blessed him. It wasn't the jawbone that blessed him. It wasn't Saul that was being blessed by David because of the because he played the harp. It was the spirit of God. It was God Himself moving. And because those men and women of God throughout the Bible followed the instructions of God, we saw a move of God. So sometimes we want a move of God and we say, we need to have service. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and we're going to call a revival and we're going to pray and, and God's going to move. And it's important to set the atmosphere for that to happen. But if God didn't call it, God is not necessarily obligated to show up. Now, understand where two or three are gathered in the midst that God can show up because he inhabits the praises of his people. So we, we can cause God to show up because we do things to invoke God's presence. But I'm talking about in this season, we really got to be in tune and touch with the moment. Stop trying to be the person that is creating a moment that was like the last moment. Another way of saying this is be where God is and not what God was. Be where God is and not where God was. We're chasing success in a way that other people had success. And, and there is some wisdom in understanding how to build things. But God can tell you to sell all and go to a place that you've never seen. Like he told Abram to go to a place that you've never seen. God can tell you it's time to leave the city because judgment is coming. And don't turn back. Don't go back because judgment is coming. And you can stay in a place 
because you see everybody moving to that place. It's important to be in tune, in touch with God in this season, because I'm trying to tell you that God is speaking through hidden prophets. When I say hidden prophets, not that they haven't been prophets and not that they haven't been oracles and not that they haven't been pastors and not that they weren't teachers and they weren't evangelists. It's the people that haven't been celebrated on a national stage. God is speaking through so many people that don't have thousands of members. God is moving in so many places that are non-traditional. And we're trying to evoke the move of God because we think that we need to be like this mega pastor and that we need to say and sound and have our service. I remember being in service and one of the greatest moves of God that I experienced having his presence of God, I'll never forget it. We go to this church and there's the organ, there's no organ, <laughs> there's no drums, and there really wasn't any mics. And we just begin to have praise and worship service just with good old hand clapping, foot stomping. And the body of the voice of the members, I, I still can hear, we just was clapping our hands and stomping our foot, feet. And we begin to sing on one accord and God showed up in such a powerful way that it still sticks with me some 30 years later, I still remember God showing up. And I think that right now we're asking for God to show up in ways because this is how God has shown up. I feel that God is saying in this season, behold, I will do a new thing. And God will show up for people that we didn't suspect God to be talking with. Because what is happening is that some people have been doing what I call studying and neology. They've been communicating with God when the door has been closed. See, they haven't been publicizing all of their moves and so many people have been publicizing their moves because they want you to know that they know God. So God is doing this and God is doing that. And I'm grateful for the testimony, but I realized that their testimony was just to try to show you that they were having moments. Their testimony just was trying to bring the spotlight on them. And they didn't realize that God had already left them because they were just trying to create moments to get people instead of being in tune and in touch with the movement. This season is about lives and saving souls. This season is about advancing the kingdom of God. This season is having heaven on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This season is about recreating God's moments here. I am sent me. I am that I am. Who do men say that I am? Some say that are Elijah. Some say that thou art the prophet. And then someone says that thou art the Christ. When you get the revelation that God is the missing link to everything you need, a small act of kindness can move mountain in someone's life. Your hello could be the thing that creates a moment of success in someone's life. How do you know that someone is not on, on the verge of giving up and you just come by and say, you can make it. Glad to see you. I appreciate you being here. That being in tune and touch with God can, can, can change the trajectory of someone's life. The only point that I'm really trying to make is that we're so busy trying to find the, these miraculous miracles to see a move of God and not realizing that God is moving and speaking every day and we can make a difference to advance the kingdom by being in tune and touch with the moment. What if God tells you, hey, that person in line behind you, buy his sandwich today, buy her sandwich today. What if God impressed upon you while, while you're in the, in the store? Hey, get, get an extra 
shirt or short and, and, and give it to, to this person? What if God says in the moment, hey, send a text to somebody. Hey, I was thinking about you. What if God just says in the moment, see, see these are the things that, that we are missing because we think the move of God has to be the same way that God has moved. So I, I think about when, when the very famous passage of, of scripture, when it talks about that he walked around the walls of Jericho and, and we walk around something seven times and, and, and the walls come down and we shout and, and we can recreate that. But what if God doesn't even need you to walk around the walls actually 13 times because they walked around six times on the seventh day, right? So you can create a moment with God by hearing his voice. You can create moments with God by hearing his voice and doing what God said. And you will find success for your life because you're walking in tune and in step with God. There's a powerful illustration that I saw on the internet where they're double dutching, they're jumping rope. And, and in order to, to get in to the double dutch, you gotta watch the rope. And what ends up happening is if you ever try to double dutch and, and it's it's challenging, you just can't run in there. Cause they're swinging, they're doing this. You just can't run in and, and get in the middle and, and, and not let the, the rope stop. So normally when, when they double dutch, now I may be, Saying my age, because I don't even know if they do double dutch, but it used to be like, Queen B chases me. And you sit here, and you watch it, and you listen to them, and you rock with the cadence. You keep moving. You keep moving. And then suddenly you enter. And then you move your feet because you're in tune and touch, and you're in rhythm that you don't break God's rhythm. So in order for you to get into the double dutch session, you had to watch how the ropes were moving first. And then once you watch how the robes were, were moving, you begin to, to get yourself in sync. You begin to get yourself in time with, with the movement of the rope. And, and once you got in sync in time and moving with the ropes, you were able to enter. And once you entered, it wasn't enough just to be in sync, in tune, in time with the ropes. When you are outside the ropes, when you get inside the ropes, you got to stay in tune, in time with the ropes in order for it to work. And sometimes what ends up happening, we get in tune, in touch with God to get in it, but we don't stay in tune, in touch with God to keep the moment going. I want to encourage you to stay in sync with God outside the moment, inside the moment. But before you jump in the moment, make sure you get understanding on what God is requiring of you. Because I've tried to jump in the double dust, just run in there and got smacked with that rope in my head. And I'm telling you, it's not fun. Get in sync with God. But in order for you, oh my God, Tracy, Tracy, you, 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 you doing it. You have to wait patiently for your time to enter. You have to wait patiently for your time to enter. And we are entering outside of God's time and we're not seeing the success because we thought it was our time to enter because God was moving in a manner with somebody else. Why am I going this way? So I'm going to share a little story. So I've been doing this why I go to church for a little bit of time now, almost five years. And I remember when I first got in my car and God had laid it on my heart to speak. And I said, God, why are you having me do this? And I remember I've been in my car and at the time people were having all these fancy backdrops and they were doing all these wonderful animations. And I remember looking and God said, stop looking at them. That's not what I called you to do. I called you to just do why I go to church. And there was times where I was getting disheartened because it's like, is anybody listening? Am I reaching anybody? And then God would send somebody to say, Michael, just hold on, just, just keep doing it. And part of the reason why I started, why I go to church, because I felt God just telling me it was my time to speak. Because traditionally, I had been a musician in the church. I had, I had grown up, grown up playing the Congos in the church. 
grown up playing the drums in the church. So most people thought of me as a musician. So when, when God was beginning to transition me behind the scenes, because God was giving me dreams and aspirations to speak, because I felt like God was calling me to say something. Someone that was quiet, someone that was reserved, someone that would stay off to the side, someone that really didn't like to speak his own words in front of somebody. God had put it in my heart to speak that it was just my time to step out. And I didn't really even know what I needed to do or how to do it. God just said, speak. And I just began to speak and I began to speak and I began to speak and I kept on speaking. And I would be like, God, there has to be more. I need more audience. I, I got to have more effectiveness. What, what is it? And I remember God telling me, turn off the internet and stop looking at what everybody else is doing. Just do what I'm telling you to do. And if you trust me, your time will come. Your time will come. Trust me, the things will come. And, that, and as I continued to, to work on the thing that God had given me, I didn't have any software. I was using a free software. And then God laid it on somebody's heart. Hey, I got a software for you that you can begin to use to Per, to produce your videos. And this software cost a lot of money. So I was grateful that someone had gifted that to me. And then I remember I kept speaking and my production value of why I go to church went up. And then from that, someone came to me and said, I've been listening to what you've been doing. I would like to have you be a part of this online event. It's, 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 it's nothing major, but I think you have a lot to say. So I, I joined that online event and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I, I don't see the point in doing it, but I'm going to do it. So I, so I did. I just was being a obedient because God said it was okay for me to do it, prayed about it, and I did it. Then I moved from that online event and then I did participate in the book. And I wrote, I wrote a part in the book. And from writing a part in that book, someone that was on LinkedIn reached out to me and said, hey, I, I I read what you wrote and it moved me. I want you to be a part of my thing. And so I, so I joined that. I'm just showing you how being in tune and touch with God and, and how being patient and moving in God's timing, what, what, what can happen. So what ends up happening, I do that. And then someone calls me a little bit later and say, hey, I would like you to be a part of my internet uh, radio broadcast. And then a little while later, somebody else calls me and say, hey, I have this show and I want you to be part of my Roku TV show. And I'm telling you this because I'm just trying to show you the progression of being in tune and touch with the moment. So the fast forward this year, I was invited to go to an event and I was a little reticent about going because I was unsure if I really wanted to go. But Something said, go ahead and do it. So while I'm at this event for my college, they began to ask for feedback. And I just spoke my heart. I, I spoke what God had given me to speak. So I'm at this engineering event for the program that I was associated with, with the University of Delaware. And I say what's in my heart. And I remember them at the end of the meeting, you know, my mentor, I said to me, wow, that was very profound what you said. And then the dean of the college said, pass the offering bucket. And you know how when you, you know that God is using you and that you're being obedient to what God is telling you to do, and someone references that pass the offering bucket, that's usually given to someone that they want to designate like as a preacher or something like that. And sometimes, you know, you're just trying to be corporate and trying to be, be correct, but what's in you comes out of you. So at the end of that session, the dean came to me and he asked, you know, you should think about being a speaker or a preacher or something, right? And I said, well, you know, I, I do this and that. And I was just really trying to be humble and modest. I didn't really want, want to be in the forefront. So I just went about my day. And then later I got an email and they said, hey, based on that, I just want to talk to you to see how you could be available to the program. So I go, I become part of the, uh, I do my interview. And from that interview, somebody else calls me and said, hey, I think we have an opportunity for you. So now when I reflect back, I've been in tune and touch with the moment. So five years ago, I sat in my car and begin to speak on why I go to church. 
And I remember my coworkers like, who are you talking to? And they were laughing like, this dude's in the car. It's in the middle of the summer because I would turn off the air conditioning sometimes because it would be too loud in my video. Fast forward to now that I got an invitation to be the speaker for the electrical and computer engineering group at their commencement. Did you hear what I said? I am now the speaker for the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Delaware to speak to the engineering graduates. So not for the program that I was in, but for the whole entire engineering body. I say all of that is because what I said at the meeting was what God had put in my heart. And when they interviewed me, I told them what God had put in my heart. And I told them that if, if you want me to speak, all I know is faith and all I know is God. And even the name that I, I write under is called Biblical Poet because I want people, when they tune to my channel, to know what I'm about. You know it's going to be something dealing with the Bible, and it might be rhythmical or, or poet-based. Poet and there was a time that when I started my page, I remember on my Biblical Poet page, I didn't have any of this why I go to church on because I just wanted to be about poetry. And one of my good friends, Jerry Poe, actually, he called me and said, Michael, why don't you have why I go to church on the Biblical Poet page? I said, well, because it's not poetry. I remember Jerry saying to me, but that's who you are, Michael. That's what you do. So you should put it on your poetry page. And I thought, like, well, who, who wants to listen to that? But see, that was being in tune, in touch with the moment because God used him to call me to go ahead and, and, and do that. So to fast forward five years later, being in tune, in touch with, with the moment, I go, I speak, I say what God told me to speak or, or I said what God told me to say. And even when they interviewed me, I said what God told me to say. And at the end of that interview, they, they, they offered me another opportunity with somebody else. And I told that guy why I do what I do and, and why I'm so passionate. I said, because I believe this is what God has called me to do. And just being obedient to the voice of God. Five years later, I have an opportunity to be on a stage that God showed me in my dreams, that God had placed in my heart. I didn't follow the path of many others that went and solicited help and, and tried to pay for views and, and try to pay for likes and, and tried to do all the stuff that everybody was doing. I just was staying true to God. I wasn't trying to mimic the success of other people by using this type of program and this type of filter and this type of scheme and this type of thing, because I knew if I stayed in tune and touch with God, and if I waited patiently, that the moment would come. There's a passage of scripture that says, humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you. He will exalt you. The reason why this is important to me, because I want to be right for the moment. I want to be in tune and in touch with the moment. I don't want to be mimicking somebody else's moment. I don't want to be out of sync with God. And I know that if I try to recreate, I'm going to just say this speaker's name because he's very prominent. There's only one T.D. Jakes. There's only one Stephen Furter. There's only one Michael Todd. There's only one. Because God doesn't create carbon copies. He creates original views. And you can go study under these people. There's only one Maverick City. There's only one Elevation Workshop. There's only one Hezekiah Walker. There's only one Kirk Franklin. You can have people that sound like these individuals, but they are not them. And God has a stage and God has a moment and God has a place and God has a plan for you that's specially designed specifically for you. And you're not going to get to the place that God has for you being out of sync with him. Thinking that the only way for me to be successful 
is to go the TikTok route. The only way for me to be successful is to go the Instagram route. The only way for me to be successful is to pay uh, to get some of these master classes. I'm not saying not to do any of those things. But I use Facebook and YouTube because that's the platform that when I started, God had allowed me to use. And there are other platforms available, and I'm not saying that I would never branch out and do other things. But there's been times because people said that Facebook, you couldn't reach people, that the audience had changed and, and you needed to go to you know Instagram and, and you should be on TikTok and you should be on this and you should be on that. And God said, just stay the course. Just move when I tell you to move and enter when I tell you to enter. And there will be an access point given to you. The access point may not be the access point that he's given some of my friends because the path that God has for me is different than the path that God has for you. I just want to encourage you to be in tune and touch with the moment that God has for you. And many times the thing that God is calling you to do, the tools he's already given to you, but it, you got to have the faith to reach out and grab the jawbone and swing for the fences. You got to be willing to use the instrument and the gift that God gave you. And sometimes when you're gifted, like in the story of the talents and Matthews, God will give gifted people many gifts that handle the responsibility of the gift. Sometimes we can't move forward because we are irresponsible with the gift and talent that God has given us. And because we're not utilizing the gift and the talent in the way that God has designated or designed for us to do it, we're not reaping the rewards and we're not at the place that God designated for us to be with or be at because we are out of tune with God. To get in that double dutch, you gotta wait patiently. And when you get in, I want to encourage you, don't leave the thing that helped you get what you got. Do not leave the thing that helped you get what you got. So when you get in tune, in touch with the rope, and you get in the middle of the double dutch, you can't lose focus. You got to stay in sync. You st still got to hear the rope smacking. You still got to kind of listen to the cadence of the song to make sure that you're in rhythm. And what I sense is a lot of us, we're not seeing the success because we sought hard after God in the beginning. And we did all that we needed to do to get in the position to be successful. And once we got in the position of success, we left the God that helped us get there. And then when it doesn't stay successful, we go back to the God that got us there. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need God to get in. You need God to stay in, and you need to let God guide you when to move on. I go to church to be in tune and touch with the moment. Stop trying to recreate other people's moments and stay with the moment that God has for you. There's a path of success that God has carved out for you to walk. And then that path of success, if there is an obstacle, that means that God has equipped you with the ability to overcome that obstacle. If there is a setback, we serve the God of the reset. We serve the God that can redeem time. I just want you to have your moment with God so that you can achieve that level of greatness that God has for you. Talk to God, commune with God, and ask him, where should I be? Who should I take advice from? And when? Do I go just on your voice? And knowing the voice of God 
The only way to accomplish this, in my mind, is to get in the word and be in the environment where God is either being taught, preached, or explained. You can't learn the voice of God and the ways of God and comprehend the depth of Christ first without having Christ. We want to have a morally upstanding life and we want to be next to people to have the oil of the anointing without going through the journey to get that oil. So because somebody had a handkerchief and it blessed, people just take a, a blessed oil handkerchief and say that you're going to be blessed. And I'm not saying that that doesn't work. The point I'm trying to make, you could be the trendsetter for your generation just by being in tune, in touch with the moment. God has a moment for all of us. But will we follow the voice of God? Or will we follow the voice of man? I just want everyone that listens to me now or later to assess, are we really listening to God's voice? Or are we, are, are we really just trying to recreate what we've seen others do? Remember, I am sent you. I am gave you a birthday. I am gifted you. I am called you. I am for new you. So whatever you need in this season, I am has it for you. Whatever you lack, I am has enough to make up the deficit. If you need to be increased, I am can increase you. If you need healing, I am can heal you. If you need more faith, I am can help you walk in faith. If you need more love, I am has it. If you need more courage, I am have it. If you need more peace, I am has it. Whatever you need, I am can be to you. But you first must know who I am is. Stay in the word. Stay in his face. And you will find success in your due season. Don't shortcut your season trying to follow in someone else's season. This is Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church, to be in tune, in touch with the moment. Do not be so busy trying to capture the moment that you're not in tune, in touch with the moment. We live in a society we're catching it and capturing it for the internet has become more important to listening to the voice of God. The powerful, one of the most powerful things you can ever do that will change the course of your life is obey the voice of God. Be blessed.